Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2022 season. As we look ahead to the Betfred Super League Round Nine clash between Huddersfield Giants and St Helens on Easter Monday at the John Smith Stadium, it was a great Friday, not just a good one, Kev. Can we back it up this week? Uh, it certainly was a great Friday, wasn't it? Good catching up with people. Good after so long of not having a good Friday, um, especially the one where um, some of the was taken. Um, can we back it up? Don't see why not. Yeah, um, as you say, it was a really, a really good Friday. Um, good to see all the pubs in town. Um, packed after the game as well. I think we end up in the Swan, and I've never been in there, and I was. I've never been in there, and the most of Saints memorabilia on the walls. Uh, it won't be the last time we go in there either. It was a, a good visit, so big up the Swan. <laughs> you know what? It's like one of my best mates, one of our best mates is a Wigan, um, and he loves the pub. Me and him went in there randomly. We were like just picking normal pubs, like the Swan, the Alfred, when that was going. We were just literally going in pubs like that, like the Turks said, the Cowley Vaults. And he, he was insistent that he wanted to go there. And you know what? It was a great atmosphere as well, wasn't there? Great atmosphere. A chatting to, music on. Yeah, chatting to, like chatting to other fans. It was, uh, yeah, great day. Happy days. And then Barbersi Curry. First time I've been there as well. Is it? It is. <sighs> Missed out. Best, best curry out in town. Absolutely. If well, anybody else, well. If, if anybody wants to prove me wrong, free samples can be sent via Red V. Get in touch. <laughs> Palace did have something to say about that, Kev. You would hey, the palace is the palace is a fine establishment. Uh, it is a fine establishment. Other anyway. other Indian restaurants are available. <laughs> I feel like Jay Rayner and Grace Denty are having a chat about restaurants. <laughs> Two critics going on. Right then, Kev, we better get onto the squads. Um obviously, as we were saying uh, before Friday's game, obviously a lot would depend on who came through, who was fit. Um, I think the big news is the injury to Lewis Dodd, um, which may see him out potentially long-term, which means Christian Wolf has got a little bit of a headache to solve starting tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. Three changes to that squad with uh, Kurt Simmon, Kyla Moore and Josh Sim coming in. And as you say, Lewis Dodd dropping out, as well as Morgan Knowles because of his uh, failed HIA. He'll be out for Castleford as well. And uh, Will Hopalati as well, uh, his injury obviously hasn't cleared up in time for him to be included this week. Um, yeah, it's, you know what? It's a tough one, that, because halfback, you, you, obviously our first choice is, is Johnny Lomax and Lewis Dodd. And you think that Jack Wellsby is your kind of your next in line. Um, is that what you do though? Is that what you do on Monday? Do you put Jack Wellsby in there? I think, if, I think Kev, if, you, if you're thinking potentially if, if Lewis is unfortunate to be out for a, a while, um, then for me, you've got to look at that's where Jack's gonna to have to be for a while. So you can't just think about Monday's game, you need to think long term. And I think if Saints is to carry on the success this year, Jack and the halves might be the option. And then, but, then it's who do you place at fullback? Do you go with John Benison, a young lad whose uh, traditional position or natural position is fullback, or do you leave him on the wing and move Tommy back there? Um, it's a big call for for Christian Wolf to make. Yeah, I keep saying that he looks one game at a time. Obviously, there is a little eye going forward, but he looks one game at a time because we've not trained. Or probably not, well, we've not trained. We'll have done a recovery session in between the two games, you'd have thought. Um, I think you go with the, the the almost the option of not changing too much and you leave Jeff Wells with full back. Um, he, he comes into the line anyway. We saw that when Lewis Dodd went off, he was more prominent in the line attacking and he can stay where he is defensively. But he will come in, he was still, he was kicking when Dodd went off. Um, like in play so I'm wondering if you don't change too much and, and maybe as we, we put the, the squad tweet out uh, this morning because we're doing this on Sunday morning um, and quite a few people said like just put James Roby in the halves 
Lussick does 90 minutes at, um, at, at nine. 90? 80, sorry. Are we going are we, are we for, we we for golden points? We might have to, you know. Well, Huddersfield did on Thursday, didn't they? So, oh, okay. yeah. How about Curtis Sinner? Well, it's an option. He has played in the halves. He'd be the biggest halfback since Carl Price played the... Um, <laughs> But it, it, listen, it, it, players have set, players have been amazed by his skill set. You've you've got options there. You have got options. Um, but I, I'd probably go with for this game, and probably this game only. I would probably go for as few changes as you could, and not start swapping the team round to one that you haven't trained with. And then over the next couple of days, because I know we've got a game on Friday as well. That's when you possibly start start training and start working your. Mind you, I'm saying this on Friday. I'd go a scratch team. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't yeah. be picking up. I, I, I think. I think we we'll start. Do you, do you potentially go with an eight an eight team reserve team, um, at Cass on Friday? We've because let's be honest, we've won seven of our first eight. We're two points clear at the top with a far superior points difference to, to everybody else in the league, which is almost worth another win in itself. Um, do you potentially go to, to cast with the sort of team that potentially played Salford away on the last game of last season and, and just rest some bodies up? Because it's a long year. We've got Salford, way ne- uh, Salford next week before the big semi-final and that's what we need to be gearing towards. Yeah. Um, I think if we win this game on Monday, um, you've earned the right to do that. You've earned the right to to kind of throw out whatever team because you've beaten your second place. Like before the, the the weekend started, you've beaten your second place. You you've beaten your third. Like as I say, if we win on Easter Monday, um, so you you've built that buffer. Points difference is unreal. That's an extra point in itself. Yeah, I, I think I think you can. I think you, you you can throw out a scratch team. But as I say, for this week, I probably. If it was me picking the team, I probably would go with as few changes as I could get away with. Yeah, and listen, I know we won't look too far ahead, but Castleford are playing Leeds um, tomorrow, which is a massive, almost Mm -hmm. four-pointer in the battle to survive relegation. Um, So they're not going to necessarily have a full team out on Friday either. No, possibly not. They, but they might have a different thing where they're just going to work through all, all your little bumps and bruises and aches. They might just go through them. We've said in the past that the, the third game is usually the flatter one. We've seen some great performances from Saints on Easter Monday. The one that always sticks in my mind is um, the Catalan game. Uh, Aaron Smith, Jack Wellsby, just literally showing what they can do. And and us just absolutely overpowering Catalan. I know they've had to travel over, but... It, it's we we have seen some good games on Easter Monday. I think it is the, the Friday after that you get, or the weekend after that you get the flat one. So if you're gonna gonna freshen it up, that's probably when to do it. When to give lads a week off, and you will get some players playing all three games. But I think like obviously Kyla Moore's come back into this squad. Dan Norman didn't play on um, Friday, so the lads who may play the next two. Yeah, I'd expect, I'd expect Kyle and Dan to come in tomorrow. Yeah. Potentially yeah. Louis. Louis gets the, tomorrow off. It might be Louis and Iggy. It might be that, that they're going to do that, take them out so they can start on Friday. And, and Kyle and uh, Dan Norman can, can come off the bench on Friday. Could be anything like that. There are going to be changes. Listen, when we say go, go as strong as possible, it does all depend on who has pulled through. On uh, from Friday, you probably do make the change of putting um, James Bell at thirteen. It's a position that he's more comfortable with. Sam Royal possibly gets game time, but Curtis slot that possibly slots just straight back into that second role. And we mentioned him on on Friday, but James Bell, what a way to make a debut for the first team! What a way to do it! One hundred and thirty odd meters. I think it was 35 tackles, something along them lines. He was he was absolutely outstanding playing in a position that he doesn't usually play on the edge, I don't think. I think he does play loose forward almost exclusively. But 
<laughs> it's one of them performances that you think if you're going to carry on like that, mate, you can't be out the seventeen. Yeah, How can you drop that out the seventeen. It's almost the culture of the club, isn't it? Um, yeah, doesn't play for the first seven rounds, comes in, in comes in, puts in an absolute belter of a performance, which makes him. Well, it, it, Christian Wolf must live on paracetamol with the amount of headaches this squad give him. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Listen, there's going to be lads pushing. Uh, we, we always talk about who's going to drop out, and usually one of them names in that squad of players who dropped out is Ben Davis. And you know full well that Ben Davis is pushing and pushing and pushing to play. And all he's waiting for is, for example, Comrade Harrell will play on Monday, I'd imagine, because he can't play on Friday because he's got that two-match ban for a, a crusher. Um, so Ben Davis will be going, right, pick me then. Put me in ahead of uh, Josh Sin. And it'll, if he's not knocking on Wolf's door saying, listen, give me a chance, I can do what James Bell did. I'm going to turn up and I'm going to throw in my first performance of the season and, and show you why I should be in this team. Everybody's going to be hungry for it because, as you say, the culture at the club is unreal. Absolutely unreal at the minute. Yeah, and do you know what? For any other club, losing their starting halfback um, would be an absolute disaster. We're looking at it, and there's four or five different options um, what you can potentially go with. Yes, we, we probably will be slightly weaker, but nothing that this squad won't be able to overcome. Yeah, that's it. Listen, you adapt and it's it's got to be the mentality that you lose someone who's your, your starting halfback and you have to put someone else in there and you've got to adapt. And that's what makes a champion team. And if we want to be champions at the end of the season again, you know what? If it, if it's a horrific injury to Lewis Dodd and he's, he's out for six months, for example, because we've not heard anything, they're going to release more info uh, in the week. But if it is a real, real bad one, then you're going to have to overcome that, aren't you? If it's one that keeps him out a couple of weeks, then you know what? Yeah, you change it round for a bit. You get start getting used to your partnerships and it's fine. But you look at, and all right, we had Dodd in the wings, but you look at like losing Theo Farge. Theo Farge was first choice. Halfback gets injured in that Challenge Cup fight. So Lewis Dodd puts his hand up and, and gets the seven shirts off the back of it. We all knew he had potential, but he had to go out and do it. And that's exactly what we're going to have to see from whether it be John Edison filling in full back or us changing it round, maybe if Will Hopoati can get over his injury issues, the Will Hopoati goes in there. He was playing one in the NRL. So, listen, he can do it, but it's him going to have to put his hands up and play a, a different position and get used to our, our attacking and defensive structures. He will do it because the culture at the club is tremendous. And before I finish talking on this, I just want to say our strength and conditioning, this is probably the toughest time of the year. I always bang on about them because they are the best in the league. They're potentially one of the best in British sport. Um, so I hope them lads have rested up as well. They might not have the same bumps and bruises, but they've got to nurse this squad through three games in eight days. So um, fair play to Matty Daniels and his team. Matty Daniels, magic hands. Yeah. There's a banner there somewhere. Yeah, there is, isn't there? <laughs> Um, I've seen a couple of good tweets uh, and the best one I will reserve for Lee Hughes who posted uh, a comment on our Facebook and said that Jai Field is Adam Quinlan with pace <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hard to argue isn't it oh well that's it nice try from him at weekend but we as I say, and as we've argued with quite a few people, I, I like I like the way Jack Wellsby plays. Um, I like the way that he, he comes into the line, he sets up tries, he's not just a support player. Um, yeah, I think we should leave the Jack Field stuff now, but leave it leave it till next time we play, which is only in a couple of weeks, isn't it? Do you know what though? It's like shooting fish in a barrel on Friday. I've never se- seen people get so irate at saying, <laughs> <laughs> we're our team, proper ups. It was upsetting them. Yeah, like like fishing with dynamite, isn't it? It's, just... it's like I'm going to put him in the same category as Blake Austin, um, Jackson Hastings, and Bevan French. They're holding out for a hero. <laughs> I, I was hoping you had the music ready to go. Then I've just put it in over the top. 
Yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kev, right, let's move on to the Huddersfield squad. Do you want me to get on the phone to them so they can release it? Yes. Are we, are we just that good that we're doing this before they've even released the squad? Yes. Well, you know what? Huddersfield are going well though, at the minute, and this is this is what giving you coach time does. Ian Watson was great at Salford. He didn't have a great... Have that one of a year last year, Huddersfield. But just having that time for him to get the squad together that he wants and get his systems into place and, and get them playing how he wants to play, it's testament to Huddersfield for, for sticking with that and not just turning around and going, well, actually, we, we wanted a bit more success a bit quicker. It's, it's just smacks of a ground plan. I don't want to have a go at the fans who, don't, who go watching Huddersfield. But those who, who don't go watching Huddersfield and have made that conscious decision not to go, where are you? Your team at the start of the, the weekend was third in the league. It's got a chance. They've got a chance of being of this being a very, very successful season. Get over there. Get to the John Smiths and, and get support in them. Yeah. They, deserve, they deserve it, don't they? They do. And obviously for this game, Huddersfield have given under-17s uh, tickets for a pound, but not if you're yeah. a Saints fan. Um, a bit disappointing in that. But... We can pay full price. Um, some former Saints in their lineup we will be familiar with, obviously Theo Farge, uh, Josh Jones is there now, Joe Greenwood. Um, players that we'll be familiar with. And, and you have to say, Ian Watson's doing a really, really good job there. Yeah, definitely. I say he's a good coach, and um, I suppose in, in a different time scale, he may well have been. Ended up somewhere like like us, and he may still do. You know, coaches do do have a little bit of a merry go round. Everybody has a, a bit of a shelf life that you, that you can get your um, your message across with people still listening and still acting on that. I'm not just saying that because Sean Dyche was sat by Burnley on the Friday morning, but it it it's potentially the thing that that in a couple of years you never know if he does it. He might end up somewhere else and that's not me saying he needs to leave Huddersfield he's still got a good couple of years there before it becomes the case um, but yeah he's, do, he's doing a fantastic job he's a good coach he's a good coach and he's getting a tune out of him now um, and listen they're still in the hunt for, for trophy and I wouldn't write him off just keeping this run going and, and, and still being challenging up there um, towards the top of the league at the end of the season as well yeah it's obviously a potential challenge cup Final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. Obviously, if Saints and, and Huddersfield can both come through that one, uh, it'll be interesting to see um, whether anybody goes off for a HIA a few minutes prior to half time. But that would be very, very coincidental. So we don't think that'll happen, do we, Kev? No. Um, just looking. It's a good job um, Huddersfield didn't play on Good Friday. Because Owen Trout, you get the feeling he, would, he probably would have got eaten alive. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll catch you for the instant fan reaction after tomorrow's game at Huddersfield. Have a good Easter, everyone.